Hey, good morning, everyone. Uh oh, you know what? I have this in the wrong shape. Hang on tight. I'm gonna flip this and see what happens here. All right, it's not come back. Hello, and yes, let's try this. Sorry about that false alarm. I had my camera upside down, but I am <clears throat> hopefully right side up this morning. I am with my partner, Jesse Stokes, hey, hey. and we are going to look at a few verses together. I know normally we're in Psalms. I've been trying to clean my desk and office area for a while now, and I came across a little slip of paper that I had that had some verses on it. And I wanted to just share them with you this morning, that's all. So a lot of times when we do our morning meditations, sometimes we talk about the ways that we think through scriptures. And in a way, it's almost as if there's certain files in your mind and during certain times of trauma or adversity or uh, opposition, we tend to need to look to open those files and grab hold of God's word and see what he's saying in the midst of that context. So what I want to talk about today was fear for a moment and talk about some verses on fear. So if you have your Bible, just grab a hold of it. We're going to start in Joshua chapter one, and I'm going to show you some verses on fear and then we're going to move around. But today's going to be a day I, Jesse Stokes style where I'm going to actually move to more than one verse and go over a topic and that topic today is fear and I think it may be helpful in the short time we spend together so Jess can you pray us in on fear yeah. let's do it father we just pray that you would give us uh, strength to not be afraid of anything that lies ahead that we would have courage like Joshua that would be bold because the righteous are as bold as a lion and I thank you God that you one of the reasons that mm. you died on the cross was to remove from us the fear of death, mm. which is the ultimate fear that everyone's born with. But oh, you've Lord. taken that away through Christ. So we thank Praise you, Lord, Lord. Jesus. Lord. Amen. So just because God has taken the uh, fear and has taken the sting out of death and we don't have to fear and he hasn't given us a spirit of fear doesn't actually mean we walk in obedience in that area or walk in victory in that area. And what I'm going to propose to you that what overcomes fear is faith. And faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. What does that mean? That means that the degree to which we're going to, would you agree, Jess, the degree to which we're going to overcome fear is directly related to the degree to which we have faith. And the degree to which we have faith is directly related to hearing the word of God. Amen. Right? So when you bring Romans, this is how meditation works. When you bring Romans ten seventeen together with the verses on fear, now we're starting to make some spiritual sense and gain some spiritual strength. So watch with me as I just show you an example of what I mean. Let me put my glasses on for this because I'm going to be trying to move through quickly. All right, Joshua chapter 1. Look at what it says. It, it starts out by telling you, my servant Moses is dead. Okay. Oh my gosh. All right. Not good. All right. Go uh, uh, over against this Jordan and all the people and unto the land, which I do give them even to the children of Israel. And, and look at what the promise is that he gives him here. He says, and every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, I have given unto you, as I said unto Moses. So there was a, a there was a, a promise that was given to Moses, but now he's extending that promise to Joshua, right? And then he goes on and continues to talk about that. But look at what he says in verse six. In verse six, he says, "Be strong, and what, Jess? Good courage. And of good courage, right?" And it'd be interesting if we talked about the difference between courage and good courage. You know, he's saying be strong and really courageous, right? Um, and, and then he goes on and says, For unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers. He's nailing down the fact. Look what he says right before that. This is precious. He says, watch this. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. Okay. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. So, you know, Joshua was a man of strength, if we look at who he was in the scriptures. But God is really giving him an extra measure and saying, hey, the way I was with Moses, that's how I long to be with you. 
And if I had the time, I could go in and to the scriptures and talk about how the book of Hebrews says that Jesus Christ is the same, what, Jess? Yesterday, today, and forever. Right. Uh, so we can actually say the same thing. The same God that parted the Red Seas and the same God that brought down the walls of Jericho is the very same God that's with us today. And then he says, I will neither fail thee or forsake thee. And we've talked about this in the past as well right to fail thee is to like for god to like just physically not show up okay but to forsake him would actually be for god's heart to no longer be for him and he's saying not only is my heart with you i'm also going to show up physically and i'm actually going to deliver you you're going to see that happen right so he's giving him these really important promises and then after he says i'm going to give you this inheritance in verse Jess, in verse 7, what's he say in the first phrase again? Only be thou strong and very courageous. Right, right. Now he says strong and courageous, be strong and of good courage. Now he's saying be strong and very courageous um, to observe. What's it say, Jess? Um, that thou mayest observe to do all the law. Right. So I want you to look at everything I said, and I really want you to consider the whole thing that I'm putting before you, right? Um and then there's a, a commandment here. He says, turn not. Does it sound familiar, Jess? Turn not from it to the right or to the left. That thou may prosper wherever thou goest. Right? So God has a law. It's a good, pleasing, and perfect revelation. And he's saying, I don't want you to turn from it from any way. But the place that I really wanted you to focus today is actually verse 9. That's what I'm really getting at. In verse 9, Jess, can you read for us um, the first line of verse 9? Yeah. Can you see it in your purview there? Have I not? Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of good courage. Yeah. Do not be afraid, or be not afraid. Neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee wheresoever thou goest. Right. So I don't know how encouraging this is to you today, but wherever you're going today, whether you're going into um, a situation where you have to talk to your prodigal children, you're going into a situation where someone you love has a terminal illness or a chronic illness, you're waking up yourself knowing that you're not whole because something within your physiology is wrong. You're waking up to a loveless marriage. You're waking up to a dead end job. The Lord's saying, I want you to be strong and I want you to be of good courage. Strong and good courage. And then he gives you the negative as well and says, be not afraid. All right. Amen. Nor be dismayed. Okay. The word dismayed has the idea of like just confusing frustration. And then he gives you the reason why. Because Yahweh, your Adonai is with you. All right. Now, I know that is hard to believe because there might be a lot of circumstantial situation evidence that's telling you or leading you to believe otherwise but this is where faith comes by hearing hearing the word of god god wants you to be confident he's with you whatever the situation is that you're going to be facing today right so let's just keep moving i want you to take a look look at this look at the beauty of what it is that we have here and now i want you to take this and we're going to move to another passage are you ready yeah. romans 8 verse 15. Romans 8 happens to be a chapter that talks more about the Holy Spirit than any other chapter in the Bible. It mentions the Holy Spirit more times than any other. Probably somewhere, I'm going to guess, around 18 times, which is a lot when you think about we're just talking about one chapter. But one thing he does say in Romans 8 that I wanted to highlight was Romans 8. Let's take a look. 15, he says... For you have not received... Jess, can you read Romans 8.15 for us? For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Right. So do you see that? He's contrasting in this passage. He's contrasting fear with the fact that we have been received the spirit of adoption. Okay. So I want you to put those two things up against each other today. Yes, you might have fear, um, 
But you know what? That's not the spirit that you're receiving. We've not received the spirit of bondage again that should lead us to this place of fear. But you've received, do you see that word being used twice, right? So here you have parallelism. You've, you've not received, right, the spirit of fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption. Right, whereby we cry, Abba, Father, which is such a powerful set statement, right? In other words, we get to actually have this intimacy with the Lord as, a, as our Father. So how powerful is that when it comes to what wages war in our lives against the flesh and the spirit, against our carnality and complicity versus being Christ-centered or Christ-minded? You look into this verse and it says, okay, let me just remind myself, I haven't received a spirit of bondage again to fear. I don't have to be in bondage to fear. I don't have to be shackled by fear. I right? I don't have to be in the stocks of fear. I right? I don't have to live with my feet shackled by fear. No, I can move on and in the spirit of adoption, knowing God is my father. That's the kind of intimacy he wants to portray to me when he gives me Romans chapter eight in this particular place. So I'm gonna I'll turn to another one, and that would be Isaiah 41.10. I just happen to know that my friend Tracy Worrell, this is her favorite verse. In fact, I think she has it embroidered or imprinted on the front of her Bible. Isaiah 41.10. Uh, this verse is the most shared verse on the Bible app. Really? Almost every year, yeah. How about that? Probably because it connects with so many people. Isaiah 41, 10. And Jess, can, can you read Isaiah 41, 10 to Fear us? Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee. I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. <sighs> So, fear not, and the reason he says to fear not is why, Jess? Because he's with us. Right. The reason that you have to fear is because my presence is with you. And then he uses that word dismayed again. And then he says the reason that you have to be dismayed is because I am your Adonai. And then he tells you what he's going to do in light of that, right? He's going to what? He's going to strengthen you. Yea, I'm going to help you. And then I'm going to uphold you with my right hand of righteousness, right? Which is the hand that does the right things. That's what just means righteousness. God's hand is righteous. So look at that today and just put all these verses together and look at what you're looking at here. You know, um, that you that you don't have to fear. And you don't have to be dismayed. Are you picking up on the fact that different writers of scriptures are telling us the same thing? The Lord is communicating the same heart. And not only that, when you walk in that fearlessness towards those things where God tells you that you have victory and can walk in obedience, not only will you walk through that with confidence, but God's saying he's going to strengthen you, right? Help you and uphold you. I mean, there's, there's so much in that verse. That's probably why, Jess, like you said, it's probably the most uh, sought after Bible verse that people are, are referencing to try to find strength today, right? Yeah. Um, do you have any thoughts on that, Jess? I'm going to turn to Psalm 34 while you do. Well, I just think it's interesting that there's a commonality between this verse and Joshua 1 9 that the reason we don't fear is uh -huh. God is with us. Yeah. And I think we're going to see a pattern there um, through some other scriptures. Yeah. As well. Agreed. Agreed. Um, Psalm 34. I hope this is helpful to some of you. Psalm 34, verse 4. Looks like, looks like the rain or my tears might have gotten to this page. Psalm 34, verse 4. Um, for what's he say? It says, I sought the Lord and he heard me and he delivered me out of all my what, Jess? Fears. Out of all my fears. So what I, I want to touch on real quick as we're doing this meditation on fears is it's a couple of things. One, he sought the Lord. Okay. And the Lord heard him and the Lord delivered him. So what I'm saying is, is that when you're in the midst of those fearful moments, if you're looking for the solution, the solution is in seeking the Lord, right? How do you seek the Lord? The way that I'm suggesting this morning, 
The way that I'm suggesting this morning that you seek the Lord is by grabbing hold of these particular scriptures and making them the greater reality in your life. This is me seeking the Lord when it comes to trying to overcome my fears. If I woke up this morning with an anxiety, with a fear, then this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go through the scriptures and say, okay, what's really real here? What does God want to say about my fears and how I'm, how I'm handling them, right? Um, another powerful one back to Isaiah would be Isaiah 43, verses 1 and 2. Yeah. I was just thinking about it last night when I was falling asleep too, this very passage. Um, because I thought about, oh, well, I'll explain to you as I say it. Just, Jess, would you be able, it's a little bit lengthy, but it's so worth it to everyone to just center down and, and focus on what's being read here. Can you read verses 1 and 2, Jess? But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, ye that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name, thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. And when thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Amen. Yeah, so much there, right? Um, so, I mean, first of all, God establishes the truth about what he says. I mean, how can God establish the truth? Well, one thing he can say is, hey, y'all, I created you. Okay. So that, that gives me the, the substantial evidence I need to be able to speak into your life. From the, and um, I formed thee, all right? I created you, not only that, but that this implies that there was some industrial strength on God's part as he strategically put you together. And then he tells us again, Oosh, fear not. Fear not. And then there's the four. Here's the reason. You, you don't have to, because not only am I cre your creator, not only did I form you, but I also redeemed you. Okay. I redeemed you. And not only redeemed you, just like as a people, like the nation of Israel, but I called you by thy name. And in case it's just, in case I'm just not being clear enough as your Lord, I'm also going to say you are mine. Okay, you could just stick there all morning and just think about what's happening there. I created you. I formed you. You don't have to fear because I redeemed you. I call you specifically by name and you are mine. And that's actually just the foundation for what it is he's about to say, which is this. When you pass through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. And when thou walkest through the fire... Thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee, right? My translation says the flame will not consume you. Yeah. The flame will not consume you? Yeah. Yeah, that's powerful. That's powerful. Um, and and the limited waters will not overwhelm you. Instead of overflow. That's my ESV. So one thing he says is he'll be with you. Jess, help me. And then he says, "Through the and through the waters they shall not overflow. And when thou walkest through the fire, you shall not so be burned." What does the waters and fire represent? Well, that's a good question. Um, uh, neither shall the flame kindle kindle upon thee. So, like, what I'm thinking that it is, Jess, is the fires of affliction, the fires of opposition, the fires of persecution that came through their captors during their time, right? And then where does the Lord's deliverance show up? I can say his deliverance can show up circumstantially where, you know, God actually brings healing or God opens that door in the midst of that work environment where we were feeling like we were unjustly treated. Like that story we heard about Maria, uh, you know, being accused of stealing something and all of a sudden, right, the door opens up wide and the very manager who oversaw the thing ends up giving her a commendation, right? Yeah. Like these amazing things. Other times it's just people. 
it, when I'm in the midst of the fire, when I'm in the midst of the water, when I feel like things are overwhelming me, God brings certain people into my life that strengthen me, that lift me up, that walk through that fire with me. And I find that God used them to help me to be strengthened and endured and to overcome, sometimes stay afloat, like I'm treading water and someone comes along and just says, hey, you hold on to me, I'll hold you strong, right? Or, you know, there's so many ways in which God uses other people in my life. But there have been times where I felt like, yeah, the waters are overflowing me. There's times I felt like I was in the midst of the fire. And, you know, we have the stories of, of the history of Moses going through the Red Sea, Daniel in the lion's den, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace. And why are we given those pieces of history? Because we all can connect with times when we're feeling that way, you know. So I'll move on to one more, and that would be um, Deuteronomy 31. Not a super common passage, but when you hear it, it's going to be common in the sense that it's going to be another verse. I'm hoping that you're going to put all of these together and use your own list of scriptures that are going to help you in terms of going, overcoming your fears, whatever they might be. Deuteronomy 31. And I'm going to go to verse 6. And we'll see if I can get it into um, the screen. And I'm so glad that you guys are with us, and I'm hoping that this is helpful to you as we do this. Jess, can, can you read um, Deuteronomy 31, verse 6 to us? Yeah. Be strong and of good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Amen. Right. So very similar to the Joshua passage. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah. So be strong and of good courage. And to fear not. Right. Or be afraid. Um, and then he gives you the reason. I mean, I'm just drilling it down, right? For the Lord thy God, for here's the reason, for the Lord thy God, he it is that doth go with thee. So th that's the game changer, is the fact that God is going with us. He will not fail us or forsake us. There's that idea again. Right, of the fact that he's not... He's not what? He's not failing or forsaking. And there's so many more, but I'm just saying, here's, I don't know, about seven verses in this short time we were together that you can pull on when you're feeling fear, when you're feeling doubt, when you're feeling discouraged, when you're feeling confused, and you can recognize that there are great men and women of God who have gone through the same things, experienced the same trials, and God spoke to them in the midst of that. And then he gives us his whole counsel, his whole word of God, so that we too might be able to be in a place where we're able to pull on some verses that'll grab us and take us out of the miry pit, out of the clay, as it says in Psalm 40. It'll He'll set our feet upon a rock and he'll put a new song in our mouths about how God frees us from fear and he saves us and he brings us through the water and he brings us through the fire and the waters of that river don't overcome us. So I want to encourage all of you with that today and thank you so much just for joining in with us and I hope that it's Hopeful, helpful to you. For some of you, these might be verses that are not um, um, foreign to you. These might be verses that you have gone to. Maybe you're going to add a few more verses to them. Maybe you want to write into the chat right now um, some of the verses that you feel are verses that you have pulled on. God has not given us His spirit. I was just going to say, go, go for it, Jess. Yeah, I was just going to say that that's one of my go-to's. Is God has not given us a spirit of fear, uh -huh. but of power, love, and a sound mind. Yeah. Yeah. Timothy 1, 7, yeah. Right. Oh. Right. Let's just do it just because um, because it's a great verse to add. Might as well just Second Timothy. Let me see where I am. My letters. But God has saved us, caused with according to seven. seven. There it is, yeah. For God hath not given us 
down here. God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. So I'm going to say as we close today, ask God to just remove from you that spirit of fear. If you have a spirit of fear, just say to yourself, that's not him. That's not of him. God wants us to break free from fear by learning his word and then stepping into faith. Faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. God wants us to walk in power and he wants us to walk in love. And he wants us to think rationally through our temptations, through our trials, through our testings, through our calamities and through our catastrophic circumstances that are right in front of us. God's given us the ability to think through them. And so that's what we want to encourage you to do today. Anything else, Jess, that's on your heart before we close it up? Um, sorry, I'm just responding. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, the reason we don't have to fear is that God's with us, right? Yeah. If God is for us. Who can be against us? So right. um, I think what really helps us overcome fear is actually the awareness of his thereness, mm. uh, the recognition of God being with me. And that's why David could say, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will not fear, for you are with me. So, you know, we, fear is not based off of your circumstance, it's based off of um, forgetting that God is with you. Because if I knew God was with me, um, whatever I go through, I don't have to fear because, um, you know, the God of the universe is on my side. Yeah. The God of Angel Armies, right? I love that song, um, God of Angel Armies by Chris Tomlin. You know, it's like, whom shall I fear? I know who goes before me. I know who stands behind. Yeah. The God of Angel Armies is always by my side. Wow. You know, you know yeah. just those lyrics, the whole song is really rich there. Yeah. Yeah, amen. I will fear no evil. So let's pray as we close. And if anyone else wants to add some other thoughts to the chat, we'd be glad to see that and uh, and then correspond with you and maybe even add that to our list of verses that we use to help us overcome fear. So Jess, would you pray for us as we close it out? Father, just thank you that you are with us, Lord, that you are Emmanuel, God with us, Lord. And I thank you, God, I just pray for anyone right now who feels a fear in their hearts, that feel afraid of a circumstance, a situation, uh, maybe they feel even afraid of you, Lord, afraid to come near to you because they feel a sense of guilt or shame, Lord. I pray you'd break that chain of fear, Lord, that you would remind them that your love gives us strength, Lord. The Word of God says, there is no fear in love because perfect love casts out all fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not been perfected in mm, love. Mm. And God, I pray your love would overflow because your love, um, it expels all fear. And I pray the love of Christ in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. And Lord, I, I pray too for Marjorie and just prayer requests that she has up here praying for a friend today who's a particularly who's a nurse and has a situation, Lord, um, a concern about her daughter who's due in three weeks to deliver her first baby. Um, and I just pray that uh, you would just, I will also pray for your son's recovery to go smooth speed. Uh, that's great. So we just want to do pray, Lord, for Marjorie. And although I don't see all the prayer requests, I see that one and just lift that up. And uh, please, Lord, for a successful delivery, um, yeah, an effective delivery as, Lord, it's just a miracle. Anyone makes it into this world in the way that we do. It's just amazing. It's a miracle every time. So we just pray that you would just be faithful in that regard and we would trust you. And Jesse and everything that he's going through in terms of his recovery, just as he's continuing to try to train, Lord, for a marathon and try to um, be at the top of his game for your your sake, Lord, just uh, in a man, body, soul, and spirit. I pray you just continue to keep moving Jesse towards wholeness as well. Thank you, Lord, for his collaboration in the spirit. And we just pray that you continue to bless our fellowship as we look faithfully to your word. Amen. 
Hey, thanks again so much for joining us as we're here in these particular passages. Hopefully today was a good message on fear, a good meditation that you can take with you into the day when it comes to the verses from Joshua and Romans and Psalms and Isaiah and Deuteronomy. Uh, Jesse's bringing us back to, you know, even what Peter wrote to Timothy and back to the Psalms again. Hopefully you guys are strengthened and blessed. And if you really are, you can share this. And if you really, really are, you can donate to me. <laughs> you might go fund me. Um, everybody's got a go fund me page these days. Uh, the other piece is uh, Dawes Avenue School. It's where we're meeting, 22 West Dawes Avenue. And we would love to see you there and invite someone to come with you. Last, um, you know, on Sunday was remarkable. Just the whole entire Holy Week to see what looked like a dozen people that were making decisions to submit to Christ, to yield to Christ, to give their lives to Christ. It's just remarkable. And it's a miracle every time. So please pray for those that are new in the faith, that are taking those first steps, that we would disciple them. And that's happening because you're bringing them and they're embracing the truth of Scripture and walking on with Him. So we want to encourage you to strengthen your own faith and also bring people into that space where they can find faith and fellowship. And we can take this journey, as we say, with Jesus together, which we'll do again this Sunday. Hopefully you'll be with us at 22 West Dolls Avenue for as long as God has us there. Please be praying. And if not, then tomorrow we'll come back. And I'm not sure what we're going to do because today was kind of a one-off on fear. But we will be here and we definitely look forward to seeing you. There. All right.